Hey everyone, and welcome to Newark Liberty International Airport. Compared with JFK, Newark only services a handful of international carriers, but they are home to one of the coolest Fifth Freedom routes in the area with Emirates. For those of you who are unfamiliar with what a Fifth Freedom route is, it's when an airline operates flights between two countries that are not their own home country, and for this evening's trip I'll be flying with Dubai-based Emirates from here in New Jersey to Athens, Greece. Delta, American, and United all operate direct flights from the New York City area to Greece, but for those travelers who want a taste of the fabled luxury of the Gulf carriers, then this service with Emirates is a great option. This route had been suspended because of the global health crisis, but with Greece opening their doors to tourism again, the service was reinstated on June 1st, and since I've been wanting to try out this flight for a while, I decided to book a seat for a few days later on June 9th. For this 9 hour flight, I bought one of Emirates basic business class tickets. This option offers all of the perks of the airline's much vaunted premium service, except there's no lounge access or chauffeur service, and you can't select a seat in advance. Having those luxuries is great, but this ticket was about half the price of the standard business class fare, so for savings like that, I'm happy to just drive myself to the airport. Unfortunately, I'm not flying aboard the A380, but instead this 777-300 will be taking me to Athens. As you can see, this plane still has the older business class seats installed, and it's in a 232 configuration, which in 2021 is pretty outdated. I was hoping that I'd be able to fly in one of their 777s that featured the more modern, redesigned seats, but this still beats flying in economy. While the plane was a little dated, I was immediately impressed with the service. When I got to my seat, a blanket, a pillow, and a pair of noise-canceling headphones were waiting for me. And after I had settled in, the crew came around and served some welcome drinks. Later they returned and gave everyone the menus, some hygiene items, and an amenity kit. Instead of the standard hot towel, we were given these packaged napkins. Do you think this is for health reasons, or is Emirates just cost-cutting? Let me know below. There were pretty bad thunderstorms earlier in the day, which delayed us by about 40 minutes. Thankfully though, this flight ended up being relatively empty and no one sat down in the seat next to me. After that delay though, the cabin doors were closed and we pushed back from the gate. Welcome aboard Emirates Flight 210, bound for Athens International Airport and continuing service to Dubai. Uh, today we'll be initially climbing 35,000 feet and planning to climb up to 39,000 feet with a flight time of uh, 8 hours and 35 minutes. If you're thinking about traveling to Greece right now, I can tell you that the entry requirements are pretty straightforward. All you need to do is fill out a passenger locator form prior to departure, and be fully vaccinated or have a negative PCR test taking 72 hours before you leave. The airline reviews these at check-in and the Greek border control will take a look at them again once you land. I didn't experience any significant delays or issues here, and the whole process was nice and smooth. Now that we've reached cruising altitude, let's take a closer look at the seat. There's 60 business class seats on this plane, and I thought the legroom was great. The seat back pocket was large, and there was plenty of room for storage. Inside you can find a package containing an eye mask and some socks, and next to that there is a sickness bag and a bottle of water. As for the seats themselves, you have the controls in one armrest, and on the other side there's a reading light, an IFE control, and a small storage area. There's also plenty of options to power your personal devices with this universal outlet and some USB ports. Each seat has one of these little tablets that you can detach to use as a remote or even watch TV. Close to the tablet, you can find the controls for the privacy divider. I actually thought this worked well, and if there had been someone sitting next to me, it definitely would have made me feel more secluded. 
The tray table pulled out from the side like this and was easy to operate, which was great to see because that isn't always the case with tables like this. There was also a little drink shelf, some cup holders, and a place to store your shoes. But you could also tell that this plane had, well, been around the block, and there were definitely some condition issues. But like I mentioned before, Emirates soft product went a long way to making up for this. For instance, the amenity kit was generously appointed with practically everything you could ever need for a long flight like this. The drink selection was great, and the cocktail that I ordered tasted amazing. The menu was pretty impressive, and the meal service began shortly after the initial drink service. For my starter, I ordered the smoked salmon, but the flight attendant brought me the meze platter by mistake. I think she confused my order with the lady sitting across from me, but I wasn't very upset because it was an honest mistake and I was so hungry by that point that I didn't really mind. Thankfully though, she got my main right, and I was served the lamb rack that I ordered once I finished my appetizer. And of course I couldn't pass up dessert, which came with a little box of chocolate which was a really nice touch. In all, the dinner service was nice. I've had better with Turkish Airlines and Qatar, but it still got the job done. After dinner I went for a walk to check out the bathroom. In total there's two bathrooms in the business class cabin, and I found that they were kept nice and clean. There weren't any high class toiletries like you'll find on some other airlines, but I can live without that stuff to be honest. While I was in the bathroom, the flight attendants had made up my seat so I could get some rest, and when I got back I settled in for this long flight to Greece. One of the highlights of flying with Emirates is their ICE entertainment system. I've flown with Emirates several times now, and every time I've had a craving for a random movie like the original Pink Panthers from the 1960s, or 300, they've had it on offer. In all, there's over 4,500 channels of movies, TV shows, and other entertainment to choose from, so you're bound to find something to keep you occupied if you fly with them. The downside was that, like the rest of the plane, the system itself wasn't in the best condition. The touchscreen and the tablet both had major lags, and the remote could be difficult to operate at times. The headphones that the airline supplied were okay. I used them for the entire flight because my own noise-canceling ones ran out of batteries, and I thought they were totally adequate. After I had finished watching a movie, I reclined the seat and tried to get some sleep. The seats don't go completely flat, but instead are only angle flat. The blankets and pillows that they gave us were nice, but to be honest, I just couldn't get used to the angle flat seat. I tried as hard as I could, but it was too uncomfortable and I wasn't able to sleep at all. About two hours before landing, breakfast was served. I ordered the cheese omelette, which came with a chicken sausage, mushrooms, asparagus, and sweet corn cakes. Everyone also received some yogurt, fresh fruit, and some bread. This was another solid meal. It wasn't the best I've ever had, but I felt completely full afterwards. As we got closer to Athens, the window shades were opened and the crew prepared for landing. I paid about $1,500 for this flight, which isn't cheap, but it was a lot less expensive than the direct flights that United and Delta were offering when I booked. Looking back though, I think the only way I'd book a seat in business class on one of these older 777s would be if I saw another really good deal like this. In my opinion, I think the cabin is just too outdated to justify spending a lot of money, and I'd probably manage just fine flying in economy. With that said, I would still love to try out Business Class and one of their 777s that feature the new interior. From the pictures I've seen, they look really nice. Venezuela International Airport here in Athens, where the local time is 20 past 4 in the evening. The temperature outside, 27 degrees, 60 degrees above Athens, until 6 or 5 hundred stopped by the captain. Once I disembarked, it was smooth sailing. The Greek customs officers checked my vaccine card and my passenger locator form and sent me on my way. I had heard that there might be some random virus tests, but I didn't see any of that happen. And that's the end of this video. Would you want to take this flight, or would you prefer to stick with one of America's legacy airlines? Let me know below.